Hey everybody, this is Eddie Dasius. We're here for another episode. Um, today we have a great guest. Uh, we're excited for Wheeler Domang. Uh, Wheeler is a Haitian multidiscipline creative and brand designer based out of Long Island, New York. So those are my words, but we're going to have a chance to have Wheeler talk. Will talk about himself. So let's, let's give a shout out to our sponsors now. Let's go. Do you want to maximize the value of your commercial property and achieve optimal productivity and efficiency in your day-to-day -day business operations? That's where Dacius Facilities Management can help. DFM offers Boston area businesses help in key areas like building and preventive maintenance, handyman services, project and vendor management, and even security consulting at competitive rates. Call Dacius Facilities Management now at 617-237-0106 or visit DaciusFM.com today. Yes, uh, if you have your property, you want to make sure they are taking care of the right way. Call them now, 617-237-0106. Or go online, www.dasiusfm.com. Like promised, we have a great guest, wonderful. we excited. I'm very excited, man, to have this guy today. Will, how are you doing today? Yeah, man, I I'm doing great. Uh, grateful as always, blessed, you know, highly flavored. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, excited to have you, man, and appreciate you taking the time to be on the Divine Purpose Podcast. Uh, without further ado, let's introduce the show, Divine Purpose Podcast, with Will. Welcome to the Divine Purpose Podcast, where we transport you along one of the more dynamic journeys of life. Have you ever been curious to know what it takes to become a successful leader, or about knowing the secrets of life through the Bible? How about engaging in conversation where no topics are off limits? We will take you to new levels with guests who can help you grasp the importance of your calling. Now, here's your host, Eddie Dacius, founder of Dacius Facilities Management. So, like we said, um, Will is Haitian, American, multidiscipline, creative, and brand designer based out of Long Island, New York. His, his work and style are influenced by the 90s culture and aesthetic. He also led design team across a wide range of brands, design projects through the development of visual brand identity and social aesthetic. Um, Will, one thing we like to ask our guests, and we're going to go forward with this. What can you tell us about you today? Yeah, for sure. I am someone who is a uh, creative designer. Um, I grew up as an artist, uh, and I didn't, really, I didn't really find my lane until like after I graduated high school trying to figure out what I could do. But overall, I'm an artist. I'm someone who's also a basketball fan as well so i'm a huge LeBron James fan um yeah so i'm someone who pretty much like i love what i do and especially in my career at the moment lebron man oh come on man i, I started to like you man i started to like you now you have to say lebron man <laughs> I went out. I'm, I'm kidding you. Yeah, yeah LeBron is, is. I'm not going to call him the good, but um, Kobe is my guy. But I appreciate what he does Respect. for the game. So let's go with this question. What are the three most challenging events in your life and how did they challenge you? Yeah, for sure. Um, three most challenging events. I would say definitely the first one for sure was um, my freshman year in college trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I graduated high, I barely graduated high school, got into community college, and I, I did physical therapy as a major, thinking, you know, um, there could be opportunities there, which there are opportunities there, but it wasn't something I, was, I wasn't, I wasn't like really passionate about, and um, ended up finding design, and, and that's something I became passionate about. So that's the first challenge I, I would say. The second challenge was probably um, during the time too, where, where my, my pops, my dad had had like COVID during that time. So it was, and I was still in college, and we, we pretty much seen him almost like 
pass away and stuff like that. So that was really tough mentally. But luckily, he he's he's great. He's in a great position now. Um, third challenge as well, I would say, man, I think I think just going back to like after graduating, um, graduating high school, uh, it was it was me trying to figure out myself, trying to figure out what I was good at. So I just like did so many different things. Um, trying to see what I could be good at potentially. Um, and thank you for sharing. And and you you said something that a lot of people will relate, where they have uh, family affected by COVID. So why was everything? So I know COVID is like new for everybody, but for for you, what was the situation like? And how did everything um, resolve? Yeah. Um, it it was definitely a uh, a tough situation at that time because I was in, in school as well. So it was you know trying to help and take care of my dad, but also to um, trying to make sure I graduated uh, college because COVID happened my senior year in college. Um, so it, it literally happened from so we, we were in classes uh, one day and then the next day Zoom meetings. So it happened yeah. just like that. Um, and then COVID happened during my dad as well when he got sick. So it was me trying to like figure out things, but also like trying to make sure I, I graduate as well. So it was, it was a lot during like my senior year for the most part. So I was adapting to like the new way to go to college because everything is on Zoom because most people, they don't have that. Um, they didn't. So I like in-person learning. I don't know what's your style. So how was it for you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely like in-person learning, but I think, man, these these Zoom meetings made me a little bit lazy. Like, <laughs> especially after um graduating college, but it it was it's different. It was something to get used to, especially in the beginning, um, because I I well obviously I've never really had Zoom meetings, um, you know, until COVID happened. So it was something to definitely get used to, but I think I became really adapted to it where I could just like stay at home and, and get what I need to get done with like the meetings and then just work overall. So you mentioned you work for um, a lot of brands. So let's talk about your creativity. And I appreciate it because not a lot of people understand that it takes another set of my like mindset. <laughs> so what was your process to, to stay um, authentic and keep producing? Yeah, I think a lot of it is uh, looking up. So I have a lot of creatives. I have a lot of designers and artists and people that I look up to. So a lot of my style, a lot of my designs, a lot of the things that I just create are people that inspire me. Um, and going back to like the nineties culture and the aesthetic, that's something that I related to for the most part coming here. Um, cause I wasn't born in the U S I came to New York city in Brooklyn, um, when I was really young, probably like five years old. So okay. a lot of the things, a lot of the things that I saw was like hip hop music, R and B playing in the streets. I seen, I saw artworks of, you know, of celebrities or people doing yeah. art on the wall. So I was easily attracted to that. And growing up in, in high school too, like 90s music, the aesthetics, like the, the fashion or whatnot, yeah. that's, that's like pretty much what inspired me as a designer. Um, you know, and what I create is like a lot of like vintage 90s, you know, stuff. So let, let's talk about um, favorite childhood memories because um, you say you grew up in Haiti and we had a, so high mission. So we had a lot of guests. They're talking about like, I don't know if you remember a lot. So can you share any, any favorite childhood memory with us today? Yeah. Uh, favorite childhood memory. I do remember when I was young though. It, it was in Haiti. Um, I remember playing soccer in the streets <laughs> with uh, a bunch of friends I had during that time. It was, I was really, really young. Um, but I also remember too, my, my, my dad is buying us Christmas gifts and, and <laughs> I was really into like wrestling and like WWE. So like he used to always get us like WWE and we used to always get excited for it every Christmas, like John Cena or like um, Triple H or, yeah. or, 
Oh, Rey Mysterio. So wow, yeah. that's good. That's good. So, um, we we gonna talk about your first job, um, later on. But um, let's go on. Is there something you wish you knew before you started your career? Mm, that's a great question. Something I wish I knew. Um, I think, I think for the most part, I wish. Not, I think I wish early on, I, I I had, you know, someone to like mentor me. Yeah. A little bit in my like earlier before I even got into my career, like when I was like possibly like you know 21 or even 22 had someone to like kind of guide me towards okay the right path so that's that's what i probably would say you know to that so so and and let's because this in this podcast man we we kind of we we should die right <laughs> so we want to go in in the details so let, let, let's go more on about, uh, about this so why you think you needed a mentor is something happened yeah um I think nothing really happened necessarily. I think it was I needed someone to like guide me towards the right direction. Like earlier in my twenties, it was me trying to figure things out and possibly figuring what I could be good at. So maybe someone who like, you know, had more experience of what I was going on and trying to figure things out probably yeah. would have been a little bit more easier in terms of like guidance and, and, and what I could do as a career. Yeah, I added a, a bunch of guests, so they said networking is important, you know, um, talking to people, because usually those are the word of mouth is kind of what gets you to um, get a lot of opportunities. So mm -hmm. let's go on about the, which of your accomplishments you the proudest? Oh, uh, definitely graduating college, for sure, which is, that's, I would say that's yeah. number one. Um coming where I come from growing up in, in the projects or whatnot. Um, I don't really see that. I'm like, I, I would say probably the first one in my family to graduate college as well. Yeah. So um, it took a while, definitely because I started from community college and then going to university afterwards, transferring. Um, but it took me a while to figure out things. You know, I started from the bottom up really. And then, and then work my way up in terms of like classes and, and getting into my major. So yeah. number one for sure would be like graduating college because high school, I, I barely, I barely did anything and I, and I barely, you know, gra graduated high school, but college was definitely that accomplishment, um, you know, getting my degree. So, and, and you said something that uh, we relate to a lot of Haitian first, first generation to be, to kind of uh, break that that process where going to college so i was navigating college i know you said you went to community college but i was the process um because the reason we want to make sure we talk about this so people we don't would they would they don't think that college would be a great i um avenue for them like what, what can you tell them to encourage them yeah for sure college college for me personally especially in the beginning, uh, yeah. it was tough. It, okay. was, it was really, really, really tough. Um, just because I, I didn't know what I was doing, you know, going back to my senior year in, in, in high school, um, you had a lot of people who was applying to colleges and, and knew what they wanted to do, like in terms yeah. of major. And, and I, me, I was the opposite. I didn't know what I wanted to do, you know. I know that I kind of maybe wanted to get into like the arts, yeah, but I didn't, I didn't necessarily think that you can make money yeah. doing that. So I, I went into like, you know, uh, the medical field, possibly trying to be a physical therapist. And it wasn't something that I was passionate about. Well, or I was, well, was, was, was it family influence? Because <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I know, I know hey, Shane, we, we love our medical field, man. <laughs> I know, I know. So uh, let, let's talk more about it because um, I'm surprised that you you uh, like embrace the art, the creativity, um, the cre creativity um, avenue, and then to be that to be your work. So how was it talking to your parent? Like, what was that discussion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's funny that you mentioned that. Now my dad he gives me my credit. My parents, they give me my credit. Yeah. But before, 
when I told them I was uh, changing my major to like to be a like a uh, graphic designer. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't they didn't, <laughs> they didn't see it. They, you know they yeah. they didn't see the vision. Um, but I, I'm someone that like whatever I choose to do, I always give myself a hundred percent, and yeah, no one's going to stop me. Like I'm going to make it. You know, and. During that time, you know, I, I barely had any any money, and I I barely kind of knew what I want when I what I wanted to do. Yeah. So m- me changing my major was kind of like a risk a little bit, but okay. I'm I'm glad it paid off. And yeah, not my yeah, dad. definitely. Like, yeah. So can't stop uh, talking about it. I know. So and they're proud of it. <laughs> so yeah. what was your dream job in high school? So the reason we like to ask this question is because we want to travel with the audience. So because yeah. it's okay if you can't figure out things now, you know, as long as you, you stay authentic, you stay positive and you move forward. So what was your dream job in high school um, and compared to now? Yeah. Um, my dream job in high school – so I played high school basketball. Yeah. So um, my dream job was try to make it to the NBA. That's yeah. it. <laughs> it was either that or uh, possibly trying to be a rapper or you okay. know something like that. So that was like what I wanted to do. Um, and then when I went to like college, that's when like I found out about design and and that's like that kind of changed my perspective in ter- in terms of like. Um, trying to be the best at like at what I want to do, but yeah, high school was like NBA or like rapper, pretty much. Wow! And to be so, that's one thing I, I can relate to because I I started I did some graphic design. It wasn't like a going to college. Um, I'm a project manager, but I realized because I was looking at those like um, hard work, and I said where do they find the inspiration that's kind of got me scared because i saw people realize like create things out of nothing and i said this is not (laughs) this is not simple (laughs) so what's your tell me about your process like let's say you're working on a project what would be like the things you do yeah for sure uh a lot of it is just research um yeah yeah, a lot, a lot of it is just research. Like, I, I have projects where, you know, before I even start designing, I go on Pinterest, I, I go on Google, um, I take notes down, I do sketches on, on paper um, before I, I get into, like, Adobe or, like, Photoshop or, or whatnot. But it, it takes a process, um, and it even takes a process when, like, de- designing a logo um, for or, for a company, for a brand. Uh, yeah. You have to make sure you do your research uh, to better understand what you know the person is, uh, needs uh, as a as a designer. So a lot of it is just like doing doing your best research and saving images, um, writing notes, uh, doing sketches, and and then once you feel like you're ready to get on like the computer, yeah. um, that's when I you know I typically like start creating. Wow! So, what's the best compliment you ever gotten? best compliment um uh i am well best comp people would say i have a nice smile but also <laughs> um i am someone who is very creative you yeah. know like yeah creative for sure so i i i, ha- I asked this question uh, lately so how important is success for you and why yeah, success for me is very important. Um, the reason why I say that coming from where I, I, I come from, um, you know, especially with immigrant parents, uh, I want to make sure that I'm successful enough to be able to help them to hopefully help my family retire. That's the goal. Um, yeah. So I, I think that's one of the reasons why I push so hard and in, in design and, and trying to be the best at it. Um, that's where my mindset is at. And success to me is just like, it's just making sure my my family is just taken care of, you know, and and that makes me satisfied and, and happy. So let let's go on your first job after college in terms of being a graphic designer. I don't know what was your title, but what was your first mm-hmm. job, and what was your confidence level? <laughs> yeah, so my first job was was pretty much a uh, 
it was an internship for like a, a venture capital okay. firm. And I was the only designer working under the um, creative director, someone who I, who I look up to. His name is Andrew Haynes. He's like pretty big in the design industry. Yeah. Um, I, I had the chance to work under him, but it was very, very nerve wracking. Um, just because first it was, you know, my first real job. At, I was getting paid as an intern, but also too, I was working under like a lot of like um, established people, people who like are millionaires who are investing in like multi million dollar brands. Yeah. Um, like the CEO who I worked with was, um, I think his name was Rohan Oza. He was like one of the judges on Shark Tank. So, mm. so I, like for me, I was like, yo, I could, I can't really make no mistakes. Really, I have to like <laughs> try to get my best. Um, but yeah, that was like my first like real job, like working with different brands and like um, under the creative di- director and just like trying trying to be like the best, pretty much. Um, I I had um I had this question, and those are great answer by the way. I really appreciate you telling um us um everything in terms of like all your journey started so i have that guess and i asked her that question so in in the black like professional black world where people can feel the imposter syndrome right and was it for you when did you feel that you you were comfortable in your position and you feel like okay you got this yeah, that's a great question. I, I, man, I, I would say after that internship, I got I got another job working for um a uh, startup car insurance company, um in Tex in Austin, Texas. So a lot of a lot of because it's still a new company, a new a new brand. A lot of it as a designer coming in, still new into my career was like yeah. design, designing a, a bunch of things or a bunch of different designs that I think could work. And throughout that process, it led to a bunch of like revisions and people um, saying, oh, well, I, we don't think this could possibly work. Can you change okay. this? Can you change that? So that kind of started to like um, make me doubt myself and my skill as, as a designer because I kept getting constant revisions and, and, and people wasn't really happy with the designs. Um, you know, so that that was really tough because after like after graduating college, I was like so on fire. I was like, "Yo, I'm the best! Like, no one can stop me." And I, and I, I got know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, then, what, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah, and I got that with like my my second job, and I was like, "Wow, yeah." But yeah. <laughs> so, when did you feel? I don't know if this happened already. When did you feel like, oh? I'm the man now, you know. <laughs> when was that moment? The we, uh, yeah. so we'll we'll just arrive. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I I think it was when people just started to appreciate my work even more. Um, like you know, it's, it was up to the point where I didn't necessarily have to apply for jobs. I just had connections, and and people will reach out for work, yeah. and that kind of like you know you know helped me. In terms of like my confidence, and then just people tell me, "Yo, your work is amazing." That means a lot. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just like people noticing my work, people reaching out and wanting to work with me. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I think I think sometimes people can misunderstand about me. Um, in terms of, I guess maybe m- possibly my patience at times. I'm I don't know. I, uh, I'm you know I, I'm a patient person and. Uh, some people, I guess, might not see me as a necessarily a patient person, um, but I, I'm someone that cares about the details and want to make sure things is right, um, okay. you know. And some people may not see it that way. I, I would say. All right, so um, we 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 close to to a, a break, um, but we have a few minutes before the break. So, um. I know parents, Haitian parents, they're really tough, you know, um, and some people have like a big uh, influence with culture, fashion in New York. What's it, what's the impact of living in New York has on you as a creator? Yeah, it has a big impact. Um, 
I, growing up in uh, I grew up in Canarsie and then went to Fort Greene, so okay. it, it has it, it has a a huge impact. I would say, like going back to like seeing artists, um, different artists and different creatives on the street, seeing art on the wall. Um, sometimes I would see like celebrities or, or whatnot, but it, it has I would say a huge impact on like how I grew up and and what inspired me as a designer and the things that I create. Okay, so uh, do you have your favorite place to visit in New York and where? So what's your process? Do you go outside? Do you stay home? Or what's your process if you have like a big project coming in? Yeah, uh, I, I definitely, right now I work at home. So definitely for the most part, I stay I stay home. But whenever I need to, like if I need a break, I just walk outside. Um, but I, I do miss like just hanging out in, in Fort Green Park um, where I grew up and just like, you know, clearing my mind overall. But uh, whenever I, I need to get things done and, and, and projects I need to work on, it's, it's just working in, in my room and um, pretty much like, you know, if I need that break, just walk out outside for a quick break. But overall, everything is just in this house. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, I know, so I don't know if you travel a lot, but the question I will ask is, do you study other people as a creative creative or creator to like improve or to get to i don't know to fuel inspiration and to work on something yeah for sure uh in the beginning of my career i don't do as much now but in the beginning of my career um there's a bunch of designers who I looked up to, like there's one called Julian Alexander, there's one called Wolfgang Weingard, Roy Crankston. Um, those designers, I like, I, I love their work. So a lot of, I try to imitate it to see how they created it. Yeah. That way it can help help me um, as a designer. So yeah, definitely. Wow. So, so far, uh, I'm very excited. So we have, um, we on Divine Purpose Podcast. We have Will the Man with us today. Um, we, we have another question. So this question is mostly for people who think that if where you started, like you say, you started at a community college, but what kept you motivated to go for further education and, and then be the person you are now? Yeah, I, th I honestly, it's the opportunities, but also it's the networking for me. Um, I went to LaGuardia Community College after like yeah. graduating from um, a major called like New Media Technology, which yeah. was like focusing on trying to be your own influencer, like on social media, creating your own platform. Yeah. And I went to like City College in, in Harlem after like transferring. and. I have one teacher, one design teacher. She gave me a C minus, but it's it's, it's totally fine. <laughs> um, uh, it was one design teacher in in one of my first classes. She mentioned all of these successful designers during that time. I was like, "Yo, this is like this is what I want to do." And ever since that time, ever since that day, like I've just been so committed. To like yeah. no matter what i'm gonna be successful in, in in doing what i love which was design all right so like i said uh we're gonna take a quick break so we have uh will with us today talking about your journey as a creator let's come back with um divine purpose podcast this is eddie dasiers what comes before making a smart decision choices a smart choice is the best option which is who we are that's why our clients expect more from us and, in return, get more in everything we do. We understand the problem. That's why we thrive for excellence. We don't just create a winning culture. We aspire to be a smart choice, a voice for solutions. We believe in integrity, professionalism, and teamwork. Our passion is to bring results from our clients by working harder, smarter, and faster. As a team, we always deliver because we recognize your needs. Choosing smart influences us to be the best version of ourselves. That makes us different than other companies. It makes us confident in achieving our goals. It makes us who we are. 
And it makes us DFM, the smart choice. Yes, uh, we're back with um, Divine Purpose Podcast, and we have a great guest today. Uh, his name is Will Domingue, and he's a creator, a graphic designer. So, Will, um, before we get to Hot Topic, which is a great segment, but we're going to go with this question. Who has been the most important mentor in our life? Most important mentor in my life? Um, man. I would say probably probably my dad for, for the mm. you know, for the most part. Um, he's he's always the person that that guided me. Um, even though I didn't really know what I was doing, kind of. Yeah. Um, and he for the for the most part he he always made sure I got things done in terms of like trying to graduate and making sure I graduate college. And and as long as I knew what I was doing, he kind of gave me that trust. Um. So yeah, for sure, my dad. Um, yeah. Um, so I did ask you this about your family dynamic, so your household. Um, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, for sure. It's it's um. I, I honestly would say I'm probably like the only creative in this family. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's a bunch of <laughs> that's job yeah. security. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. It's it's a it's a good dynamic. Like super grateful. Um, you know, I have I have two two other brothers. So like, my mom's the only person, the only uh, woman in in, in the house. Mm. But um, but yeah, growing up with brothers, like I have one who's in marketing, and then another one, another one who's in computer science. Wow. So yeah, so I'm like the only one who's like the the artist or the creative you know <laughs> so well, what was it in the house is it a lot of fight a lot of uh, is it was it competitive oh yeah definitely competitive uh especially when i play 2k oh uh, yeah um yeah definitely competitive um yeah like we had a couple fights too uh, i'm not going to front i know, um, I, know I know that's <laughs> coming <laughs> i know that's coming because uh, like i said it's it's great to to have this i don't know if it's a big family so let's talk about um our f uh, parents sacrifice you know um like you said you the first um to graduate college in your family but at the end of the day our parents they did they didn't have that opportunity and but they always wanted us to to reach higher goals or was it for you in terms of your, your dad or your mom helping you going forward yeah first first and foremost i've I've never really wanted to disappoint my parents um you know i, I know they made a bunch of sacrifices you know especially my, my my dad coming here coming to the u.s and having a trying to have a better opportunity yeah so I, I wanted to make sure that like whatever i did was like to give a hundred percent like I, I you know and i give them a lot of credit for a lot of the sacrifices that they made for me to get to get here um especially like um just graduating college and like yo just thanking them for like for you know for guiding me and, and the journey that I, i've come from yeah so, so super grateful for for both my parents so when did you realize that i don't know so i'm just guessing because i know a lot of parents they will they will really work hard in terms of haitian Im immigrant when did you realize that your parents were doing a lot in terms of sacrificing themselves to push you guys to to reach higher goals yeah i think i think a lot of it was you know even coming home late from work, you know, going yeah. through a lot at, at work, um, making sure that we have, you know, this food on the table, you know, yeah. um, what else? It's like making sure we're on the right track, but it, it was just a lot of like things when, when it came to work and, and just like supporting us as well, but also just trying to guide us towards the right path and oh, the right yeah. direction. So, and just shout out to all Haitian parents who's doing great job and who's like pushing our their kids to to reach higher goals. So let's let's go on hot topic. Hot topic is a fun segment where we talk about topics, questions related to your career, question our audience, 
they they don't they will not have a chance to ask you. Let's go with hot topic with Will. So this question is kind of hard to uh, to ask in English, but I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna do my okay. best. So. They said all creative minds are wearable. Is it true? Say it again. Sorry. All creative mind, who pe- people who creators, they kind of wearable. Um, <laughs> I don't like, know. <laughs> they they yeah. they want like they they. Like uh, you said, Z, you know. So they want to. If they see something, they're gonna go after it. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's me. <laughs> that's yeah, that's me. Um, yeah, I yeah, I would say I guess like I was naive and hard headed. Yeah. Um, you know, growing up, like it was like my way or the highway sometimes. Um. Oh, yeah, but yeah, I definitely agree. <laughs> so that, that's that's funny. But do you do you think that this help or so? So now, okay, question. So, can you spot another creator? Creator, like, is this even they don't you don't know what they do? If there's something, some tips, like from you know, like um, clues, you can see in their attitude or character that you can say, oh, this guy is a creator. Yeah, I I think for the most part, it's like I can see it sometimes on how the person dresses. Mm. Um, you know, like based off how the person dresses, I can tell maybe that person is a creator or, or whatnot. Um, and possibly sometimes on how they talk and or and how they see certain things when it comes to art. Um, so yeah. So which things? Okay, which part of the graphic design of being a creator is the most difficult to master? That's man, yeah, great question. That's a great question. Oh, uh, difficult to master. I think, I think for me, I would say time. You know, um, trying to balance like multiple projects at at once. That's something that I feel like I need to work on is just time management when it comes to that. Um, but overall, for graphic design, in terms of what to master. And I, I think going back to the design, I think um, like typography design yeah. is um, is something that I feel like it's it's hard to master yeah. because it's 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 so many different things you can do with it, and um, I don't know, is this is this something that's that's like tough as a designer because you're designing basic literally from from like words and, and fonts. And yeah. you're not using no images, um, that like you're just trying to create a story using like words. Words, so yeah. I, I, yeah. So, is can you share? In, so you don't have to say where, but which project you work on, you had the most fun, and which project you work on, you hated it. <laughs> you don't have to tell me where we yeah. work for, but kind of get into which project was and what was in, in Intel. Yeah, so I'll say the first project I hated, which was last year. It was um, it was designing a bunch of um, holiday stuff for like okay. the, for like the web, the website. It was a bunch of templates using template designs. Yeah. And it's like changing things around. It was it, that was annoying. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I, I guess the the most recent project I'm, I'm working on now for for the company I, I'm at the I'm at at the moment is like it's creating like designs and and variations of like the things that's coming up like um you know Mother's Day Father's Day yeah. Uh, memorial day so those things to me are, are, are exciting like w- whenever i get the chance to just like create my own design concepts i'm happy but if it's like a template i'm using someone else's template design and just changing things around yeah that like you know could be annoying so um and thank you for your for your answer so let's let's 
I was thinking about, uh, I don't know if you had any other job just not related to design or to be a creator. Yeah. Can you share about transferable skill, things you learned from a previous job and that you're using now? As yeah. A creator? Yeah. Uh, I would say going back to being patient, uh, yeah. one, one of my first... Uh, one of my first jobs, which was not designed, was in community college. Was um, I was working with kids, like um, kindergarten kids, like in yeah. first and second, and that that showed me a lot of patience. You know, working with um, little kids, and um, but yeah, that that helped me a lot in in my transition um, into like getting into my career, like patience, like waiting on God's timing. For, for when it's the right time for me to like to get into like my career so it was it was it was that pretty much I've never really like had like the typical um like you know nine to five jobs or like McDonald's or like no disrespect I, I give respect to like people who who, yeah. those, who do those type of jobs but I've never really really like really had those type of jobs I always saw something greater in me and something better like i i can never never really saw myself doing um those type of jobs i did work for macy's at one point oh yeah it, it was for like one day <laughs> and then, <laughs> one yeah. day <laughs> yeah yeah it was it, I, I, I remember <laughs> there was a job like that too it was uh, i was a valley yeah. valley attendant and yo I probably could stay, but they wanted me to share the tips with everybody. No. So I think I had eighty dollars, and then when we share, I end up having fifteen dollars. That was. But uh, let me ask you this question, because we we feel like, as a uh, Haitian, um, you know, music. Uh, you know, I don't know if that happened to you. So for me, my mom didn't want me to be a musician because she said musician vagabond, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. is, is there is there something that relate to that where they didn't want you to be a creator because you will be like a free mind, uh, like a free minded person? Yeah. Yeah. They, they didn't want me to be anything related to like um, a rapper or yeah. an artist um this or an actor i tried i tried becoming an actor at one point but they just like it was if it, it was from the perspective of like yo you're not gonna make any money doing this yeah. like don't don't try it like you're just gonna be wasting your time um so that's 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 where it comes from i i would say <laughs> so is there a moment when you had a, like a big pay pay day by being a by being a creator and did you yeah. share that with your parent what was their reaction oh yeah. oh yeah they was extremely happy going back this was two years ago um i got my first big salary paycheck i got promoted yeah and once i saw my salary i was like i was like yo this is a lot i've was, I was <laughs> never really like <laughs> i've never really like seen this much like, yeah i was like yo in my I'm like, I made it. Like, uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, you got, um, you, you, you got to tell us, you got to tell us yeah. the way you did it, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was my second job. Yeah. Um, my second design job. And then I had a meeting with my boss and he was like, yo, congratulations. You, you're being, being promoted, um, with the salary around that time it was like 70 K. Yeah. And I was like, yo, wow that's like, that's I amazing like, i was like yo this is this is like i was so happy but in, like when i had the meeting when i was like yo like thank you man you know you know and then <laughs> after <laughs> after that meeting i just like told my parents it was like they was mad excited it was like and i was like you see you like you should have you know but <laughs> <laughs> now i think they they very proud and this is great too because um uh, now this is this is something people don't usually have a chance to know or if they don't have a mentor if they don't network 
when did you what was your mindset negotiating your first job or your big job yeah i honestly i, I had to figure things out on, on the fly because i coming coming into my career like i didn't know how how it was trying to negotiate salary when it came to negotiating money or any of that type yeah. of stuff so i had to figure things out on my own like I, i'm now better with it like coming from like last year um after like working with amazon but now like i'm in a better spot where like i know how to negotiate and i know how to get what i you know what i need to get pretty much but it took wow. a while to like figure things out no no definitely so that was great that was great this is uh will the man on on hot topic So I have a new segment and I'm going to start it with you. I don't have any design yet, but I'm just going to try it. It's called Trust Me, I Know. So it's it's you bragging about something you figured out in your field, right? So it would be a question like that. What is graphic design design and what is not graphic design? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Graphic design to me is storytelling and being able to to uh, tell a message through your design. Um, what is not graphic design is <laughs> people might hate me, but but it's just like that. Some of like I've seen so many horrible designs on um, Instagram and on TikTok, <laughs> and a lot of it is just like. It's like bootleg design. <laughs> it's it's not um it's not the type of design that you see on like in the like Manhattan or in the city on the billboards or like Nike or or Apple or, or or whatnot. But to me, like graphic design is being able to just like tell a message and to tell a story. But if if you can't do that through like design, then you know, I, I don't know what, what to tell you, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I, I've seen a couple bad ones, but yeah. Any example? Man, um, I don't have examples. I, 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 I'm, t- I'm telling you, this is trust me. I know moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't necessarily have examples, but I, I do see a couple of like on social media, on like TikTok, Instagram, um facebook so yeah <laughs> no thank, thank you for tagging along on this but is there is there something you can say so i asked you that question on trust me i know is there trust me i know thing you want to share with the audience today yeah um man trust me i know uh trust me I, oh i mean trust me i know um one of my mentors someone who i look up to design uh, a 50 cent album cover so that's, hmm. i guess that's that's something you know yeah <laughs> yeah no thank you man that's that's appreciated so like i said it's a try we we try and it's something i had in my mind lately because we 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 know stuff you know we 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 experience a lot of things and sometimes people think we don't know I know what I'm doing, you know. So yeah, that's that's the reaction I'm I'm hoping to get when we when we launch this segment. But we, we you did great, man. You did great. So let's go on personal side of you. This is the closing questions. Yeah. Is there a question you wish I asked you today? Man, I I think you you've asked great questions so far. I, I can't really think of any other questions. Um, are you? I know you're culture. You're into culture, rap music. Any music you should recommend to our audience or somebody who's not from the U.S. who's yeah. listening. Yeah, I've I've been listening to a lot of um. There's this uh R&B artist. I believe his name is Lucky Day. Okay, he's a, he's a great soulful um artist. I, I listen to like the J. Cole's too, or like Kendrick. Yeah. Um, you know what else? What else? But I'm mostly like, yeah. 
any Haitian artists you know? Are you into oh, Copa? Are you into Copa? <laughs> it's funny that you asked me that. I, I'm I'm getting more into that now. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It's because growing up in in the U.S., like I don't know, maybe it's just me, but like I I grew up on like the U.S. or like the American music. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't like necessarily. Um, it wasn't like it was pretty much like. Like I, I grew up into like gospel music, like the you like Kirk yeah, Franklin. Yeah, Hammond. same, same, same here, man. Same here. Um, yeah. So, who's your favorite um, gospel singer? Gospel singer, oh man, Jonathan McReynolds, for sure. Jonathan, you know who I, I love? Um, I love Marvin Sapp. Marvin Sapp's a legend. I love yeah, Marvin Sapp. Yeah, yeah, I love Marvin Sapp, and I used to like Kirk. But I think he yeah. kind of changed his, his music. Yeah. But um, is there, are you a big traveler? Are you a big foodie? Yeah, um, man, COVID happened and <laughs> I gained a couple pounds. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, try I'm trying to travel more this okay. year. Um, I'm going to San Francisco in a couple months. Wow. And then hopefully go to like L.A., for for work just visiting my job mm. um what else i'm trying to hopefully maybe go to new orleans this year too okay so that's, that's where to go yeah any any hobbies you want to share with us yeah for sure hobbies I, I i like to read you know for the most part i love to play basketball at the gym just um i've been working out so that's that's a hobby as well just like working out whenever i can um yeah, I'm I'm pretty simple, man. Just like the typical, um, yeah. This is this is pretty much the typical like, yeah, reading, working out. Um, yeah. So no, <laughs> no, no video games. Video games sometimes, you know, when when I can, I don't play it as much. Yeah, uh, I have a PlayStation Five, but I don't play it as much as my brothers do. Yeah, but when whenever I, I can, I just play two K. That's literally all I play. So is there um uh like a, a retreat like uh, it might be in your mind where things you do to kind of let you recycle your energy or reset? Is there yeah, something you um, do that allow you to get to that stage? Yeah, for sure. I think I think what I'm I'm trying to be more conscious of this year is like mental health and self care. So. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the things that I, I I've been doing now, especially recently, is just like walking, you know, walking outside, going for a quick hike, or like walking around my neighborhood, just to like, um, you know, just to clear my my mind. But also like my job, they have paid time off, so using those, yeah, you know, whenever whenever I have the opportunity. Now, now that's good to hear because uh, we have guests talking about. Um, self-care which is important because as an artist, artist creative mind you really always on your in your mind trying to work on different aspects you kind of need that um mm -hmm. that um safe zone you know safe mm -hmm. zone so let, let, let um this is eddie dasius we excited we had a great conversation with will today so will last word for you yeah uh man thank you so much uh for having me uh thank you for reaching out it means a lot and whoever whoever is um whoever's watching this um you know just know whoever's in college as well how just know that it's important to network it's important to like to reach out to people it's okay to reach out to people whenever you need help um and that's something that i've learned along my journey as a as a designer all right so that was great and i, I think uh, this was great man uh, this was great even before we went live i was telling you i'm, I'm excited to to kind of hear from you yeah. and that uh we need more people so if you know any friend anybody who can be a good guest a good guest in this uh in our platform send us our way so this is eddie dasius with divine purpose podcast we had will domain today and we appreciate you man yeah, appreciate right. you, man. Thank you. Right. Take care.